for some sign. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at Shipley Baptist Church on this Palm Sunday. Uh, it's a great delight to see those of you who are physically gathered here with us, and uh, we greet those who are watching at home on the screen. Uh, we've had a, an Easter card to all at Shipley, so this clearly includes you, to joyfully remind you that God's love is everywhere. Enjoy the pleasures of this wonderful time of year Love and best wishes from all at Tetley Street. That's the Tetley Street Memorial Baptist Church. Not the pub. <laughs> and uh, Catherine Mitchell thanks all those who bought the little Easter ducks last week and that money will go off to the Ukraine appeal tomorrow. It would be very helpful if those of you who are pastoral visitors could just gather here at the end of, of worship at the communion table just to, a little chat with you about something. And then I'm sure, though she's not present here, but I'm sure Katie would want me to remind you that this afternoon there is a lantern workshop on these premises. The Times on the new sheet. Uh, that's so that you can be part of uh, an extravaganza in Roberts Park next week on Easter Eve. If you'd like to know more about that, uh, Katie is in the narthex at the moment and will give you a wave. Sorry, Katie. And uh, she'll be available to, to explain to you what's going on this afternoon with the workshop. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So we come together to begin this week in which we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Let us remember the entry of Christ in triumph into his own city and follow him with our lively faith. And we're going to be very lively in a moment because uh, John and uh, the musicians are going to lead us in, in two songs which will require us to stand. And on Palm Sunday, we need to stand and wave our palm crosses. Now, we've recruited a team of three or two. Uh, well, there's room for one other special helper this morning. There are three baskets of palm crosses here, which during these songs... We're going to distribute, and uh, Josh is going to help us do that, and Owen is going to help us do that. Uh, would you be up to helping too? Yeah, great. So a uh, quick replacement of helper there. Good. So I'll hand over to John, and then you come and get the palm crosses when everybody's stood and looks as if they're getting into our <laughs> worship song. I was asked a question this week in school that I have never been asked before. Who is Hosanna? Yeah. 
returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Oh, when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed. Could you um, just let that out of there, and then I can put it on the music stand, and, oh. <laughs> Give it time with those knees. Oh, see. Ah. Uh. I've been doing Palm Sunday in school all week, one way or another, and uh, I've been talking about how much trouble you'd be in. Oh, what have you done there, Alex? Well, I'll tell you what, it's an accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a whole sort of string shy at the moment. It won't steal your thumb, does it? So I, I, I've been talking to kids about how much trouble they would have been in on Palm Sunday. Because first of all, they'd have wanted to be there. And the mum would say no. And that would mean you'd have to sneak out. Not that you would ever do that, kids, would you? When you've been told not to. And they'd be there. All these kids would be there. And somebody is going to recognise them. Because that always happens. And they speak to your mother and they say, I saw your so-and-so in Jerusalem. Did you? Trouble. See, we are here, we are here probably in breach of the prevent strategy because we are, um, what's the word? We are bigging up vandalism. They took branches off trees. Whose trees? Not their own trees. Imagine the man coming running down the garden path saying, I know you. I know your dad. I play darts with your dad. Then they put the coats on the road. That's it done bear thinking about. But I mean, how do you cope with that? You have a coat that's been dealt with by a donkey. Do you? Thank you. Do you? Oh, do you know, I remember you doing that for the first time when you were 12. <laughs> the, yeah, so you, you take your coat home. You confess. You say, Mum, can you do something with this? And she says, my mother would have said, how did you get it that colour? <laughs> Closely followed by, where did you get it that colour? And then it's, it all comes out. So perhaps you'd, you'd try and, and bluff it and just turn up with a big sort of brown stain on your coat, you know. I think she might notice the smell. Or then there's the other option, which is where you just leave it on the road, like Leeds Festival, you know, just, just leave it. 
and you go home and you say, Mum, I've lost my coat. Not another one. I, I did some market research at that point. How many of you leave clothes behind? It's like 100%. If you've got one that's special and doesn't and remembers, it's a rare thing indeed. <laughs> and then, of course, they're in trouble for making too much noise. Who'd have thought it? Kids making noise, eh? Blessed is the King, humble majesty, Lord of everything, Lord of you and me. The stones will cry out if we silence stay, if we stare at heaven's King and have nothing to say. And I will lift my voice in worship. And my soul shall praise your name My heart will be your holy place to stay And I will welcome you to reign Sing that verse again Blessed is the King Blessed is the King Humble Majesty Humble Majesty Lord of everything Lord of you and me, the stones will cry out If we silence stay If we stare at heaven's king And have nothing to say And I will lift my voice in worship And my soul shall praise your name My heart will be your holy place to stay and I will welcome you to reign. Blessed is the King, showing amazing grace, leaving heaven's throne, taking a servant's place. The stones will cry out if we silently stay, if we stare at heaven's King and have nothing to say and I will lift my voice in worship and my soul shall praise your name my heart will be your holy place to stay and I will welcome you to reign So let us pray. Our God, as we gather here on Palm Sunday, increase the faith of your people. Listen to our prayers, as today we honour Christ our King and remember his entry into Jerusalem. And from that, may we honour you every day by living always in him, who is alive and reigns forever. Amen. And now a duo from the Drake family is going to read to us the gospel for today. Matthew 21 from verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her, and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. <coughs> 
The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and Jesus asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So John's already offered us some comments on the uh, events of that day and how uh, they might be interpreted today. So our palm crosses are a bit more refined than just pulling branches down off trees. But uh, they come from the Diocese of Maasai in Tanzania. And uh, they're made during the year and then shipped by sea. There's a map here of how they get to us uh, from Tanzania. And they give work and something to do for folk who otherwise wouldn't have much by way of employment. Employment. So the good things to note about these palm crosses, which I hope you'll take home, you'll put somewhere prominent in your house until Lent, when uh, Mike's not here this morning, he's out on an Easter egg run, but, uh, no, he's not running, he's on his bike, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, Mike would tell you then, uh, on Ash Wednesday, you burn your palm cross and mark your forehead, but these ones are great for us because they're not chemically treated in any way. They're the actual, pure, real thing. They're not cut down, or the palms that they come from are not cut down. They come from palm leaves that fall naturally off the palm. So they're as ecological as you can get it, and uh, I think they're... The route round on the sea must be by rowboat or something. I don't think we need to count uh, other miles for that. But So take your palm cross home, put it somewhere prominent, and then come Ash Wednesday, we'll have something else to do with it. Uh, and in a moment or two, when we've sung again, the younger members of our church community are going to go to their own activities, but we want to bless them this Palm Sunday and those who will be with them. Our God, we thank you for the excitement of Palm Sunday, for the great crowd gathering, for the singing and dancing through the streets. Help us to be people like that, full of joy and presence. And particularly, as we move now into this Holy Week, may all the insights of that week come alive and afresh, especially for the younger members of our church community. Bless them. Bless those who share with them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Blessed is the King who comes. The internet is a marvellous thing. I'd quite forgotten this, and Ishmael posted it on his Facebook page. And I'm going, oh yeah, I remember this. So we did it in Bailden. Where is she? Where's Ruth? Where's Ruth? We did it in Bailden. Yeah, you wouldn't have heard because they didn't let you and your little ones in, did they? <laughs> Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And again now, blessed is the King who comes. In the name of the Lord, blessed is the King who comes. In the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. When mouths stay closed, the stones will cry out. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. When mouths stay closed, the stones will cry out. So Stephen's remembering.
which is quite an achievement, the, uh, the signing you do for this. We'll make, make something up if you want. Um, if you just want small children to get up and dance, you know, the old people won't do that because their knees won't stand it. But feel free. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord again. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. When thou stay closed, the stones will cry out. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. When thou stay closed, the stones will cry out. Majestic is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Majestic is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Majestic is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Majestic is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. When mouths stay closed, the stones will cry out. Peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. When mouths stay closed, the stones will cry out. Triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Triumphant is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And glory in the highest When mouths stay closed The stones will cry out Peace in heaven And glory in the highest When mouths stay closed The stones will cry out Blessed is the King Blessed is the King who comes In the name of the Lord Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, last time, blessed is the King who comes. In the name of the Lord, blessed is the King who comes. In the name of the Lord. You there? Uh, okay, it's from Zechariah, which is, if you're looking in the Pew Bibles on page 955, if you want to follow along. Um, if you're reading from your own Bible, it's somewhere between Genesis and <laughs> Malachi. <laughs> daughter of Zion, rejoice greatly. O daughter of Jerusalem, shout, see. Your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. enough to remember this. 88. Whoa, that's long time ago. <laughs> well, there's only about two people in here that wouldn't have been born <laughs> if that. Blessed to be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, O Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, O Most High. The name of the Lord. Strong tower, the righteous run into it. The lay has saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run. To the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord, most high. Glory to the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord. Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord A strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved.
Lord Jesus, and take your place. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Let's pause for a moment then, those words ringing in our ears. Jesus, we enthrone you. Come, Lord Jesus, take your place right at the heart of us here. Uh, this week I had a great privilege. I was invited to deliver the graduation address at Luther King House in Manchester. They've been saving up because universities haven't been having graduation ceremonies. And so they got actually 40 students over the past three years who'd got something from certificates and diplomas through to a couple of people who had doctorates and uh, I was under strict instructions. This is to be 10 to 12 minutes and, uh, you know, no longer. They really want to get to the bum fight. So, uh, I broke all the rules I was taught in my years at Manchester in that I had a three-point address. Now, my reason for mentioning that is that I felt I'd got to redeem myself somehow. So, this morning's address had five points so that I somehow atone for the three-pointer on Thursday. And I've entitled this Great Expectations. Here's the beginning of a week full, as it was full, of great expectations. A week of very powerful imagery. A week when everything we read in the story appears to have a significant point to it. Some of you, though, 
in my experience of Shipley Baptist, not many, will make the journey through the week, day by day, recalling each of the events. Others of us will simply gather here next Sunday morning to sing the hallelujahs. But if I want to today, I want to try to point out the expectations of five different groups in that week, lest somehow you jump from this Sunday to next Sunday and miss the drama in between. There's that expectation of the crowd, and uh, Stephen's been fully up for that this morning with all his uh, movements and actions. You know, he is the perfect example of the Palm Sunday crowd, getting into the spirit of things and engaging with it. We all like a procession, a parade, uh, and we can have that next Saturday evening with our lanterns in Roberts Park. We enjoy the thought of what happened on Palm Sunday. This guy's turned up from Nazareth. He's created a bit of a stir. Let's go and join the crowd. As John pointed out, perhaps you don't get your permissions. You just turn up. You have your fun. Some say it was a sort of Romans day out, that is, let's get the Romans out, sort of a meeting. Let's have no more pharisaical hot air. Let's have real action, a man of the people. Let's shout about it. Let's see if something can really happen. I like to think the crowd wasn't totally illiterate about their own story, you know. That's the sort of thing a historian does. You always like to think that somebody else, as well as you, cares about the past that got us here. And so perhaps they thought about the Maccabees, who taken on those previous oppressors, the Greeks, who promised them a heroic leader riding into Jerusalem on the great white charge. A note in the reading, Martin read for us from Zechariah. There's that reference to that vision of the Redeemer who would enter Jerusalem in triumph. Bread and circuses, bring it on. Hosanna then to the son of David. Perhaps the moment is coming. But for the crowd, in their great expectation, it doesn't quite work out, does it? There isn't a big white war horse. There isn't any military might. And within the day, a few days, like most crowds, there's a fickleness. Hosanna becomes crucified. Lesson one, then, of Holy Week. Don't trust crowds. Crowds can have simplistic hopes and tend to read only bits of the story and not the whole. They miss the symbolism of Jesus on the foal of the ass. They've heard the Maccabean legend, but not looked at the suffering servant in Isaiah. On Palm Sunday, populism misses the mark. Clever, strident voices, the odd joke, bread and circuses, turns out to be wrong. There's another gang around in Jerusalem with great expectations, the Pharisees. They're a very different breed. They're sophisticated. They're cultivated theological intellectuals. They've measured all their responses to new trends. They're seeking to weave a narrow line between preserving their theological integrity and appeasing the Roman civil power. This populism of the crowd spells trouble for them. They had become a sect, a religious force to be reckoned with. Avoidance is their principal strategy. Avoidance of the unclean, the uncommon. And they emerge out of that Maccabean period with a sense 
have been the exponents of the great white charger theory of liberation. They're against the outsider, against the other, whether of Greek or Roman ideology. And they love the law. So whilst we might think of them as legalistic, debating the issues rather than doing anything about it was more their style. And that's why they rallied round Jesus, because he was always up for a good debate. He'd been willing to debate with them, to challenge their ideas. Yet, in Holy Week, as the debating turns to action, they're less sure. Because they valued their place in society. Yes, a bit of change, but not a revolution. Upset, but not a total new order. As time wore on, it became clear in their minds that Jesus' version of renewal was not for them. The great expectations of the debates in Galilee became the desire to keep everything safe and secure in Jerusalem. And then there was that third group, the Sadducees. Their name was linked with Zadok the priest in the time of David. Zadok the priest whose anthem rings out at coronations in Westminster Abbey. Descendants of Zadok, they thought themselves a cut above others. They weren't going to be bothered debating with the Pharisees. They engaged in intrigue, manoeuvring with power with the authorities. Down-to-earth pragmatists, rejecting the resurrection of the dead and believing life was held in your own hands. Pharisees were arguing for decentralisation. The Sadducees, following on from Zadok, wanted to keep power in their own hands, the hands of the temple authorities. They were the temple aristocracy. And they didn't mind Jesus challenging the legalistic notions of the Pharisees, but when Jesus outsmarted them on the resurrection debating points, then they abandoned him, not fit for their purpose and certainly not part of a historic, elite, religious community. A fourth group, of course, were the disciples. Spare a thought for the disciples in Holy Week. Ordinary women and men, and here I'm thinking of the 72, not the 12. Plucked out of obscurity, fishermen, despised tax gatherers, odd bods, prostitutes, family members. And they were fascinated by Jesus. Tale teller, wonder worker, community feeder, and possible, possible revolutionary. For some of them, they've had almost daily contact with Jesus over two years. Others came and went as the mood took them. But now, they have their expectations. They seem to be on the winning side. The crowds are shouting and they're there with Jesus as they enter Jerusalem in joy and in hope. But of course they weren't listening carefully enough to all of the teaching. And as the week wore on, when the authorities of the temple were challenged, when the might and power of Rome were challenged with the message of Jesus, many of them disappeared. The new order somehow seemed to demand more of them than they were willing to give. Though for some like G Judas, his expectations were beyond those 
of his fellow disciples as he looked for something more. Great expectations. What about the man who rode into Jerusalem on the foal of an ass? Biblical scholars have long argued over the point at which Jesus knew the inevitability of his death. The balancing of the pre-creation Christ, the dawning of all things in the Jesus and history of the living. Did he know it at his birth? Did he come to it at his baptism when God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased? Did it take hold of him in the desert place when tempted in every way as we are? He had to make his choices. Wherever we know by this point, having set his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem, he'd worked out what was in store for him. And he knew he couldn't meet the expectations of the crowd. No bread and circuses. He couldn't just simply go on debating with the Pharisees or becoming part of the theological elite with the Sadducees. And as he looked around at his disciples, he could no doubt see that they weren't quite going to make all the way to the foot of the cross, at least not all of them. So he understands he's essentially alone, carrying that vision of his God's understanding of peace, of justice, of righteousness and that to his death he must go so that you and I can be healed. Great expectations then. Ponder it as we will. In this life we cannot know with certainty. All that we do know as we move into this week is that Jesus sets his face resolutely towards Jerusalem, did not deviate, did not pander to the expectations of others. But all he could do was weep, weep over the city, weep over those who had other expectations that were not going to be fulfilled. Because God had some other, deeper, more profound intention. And even with his own disciples gathering around the table, they somehow don't quite understand what he's saying. He alone. He carries the expectation of his own death. Cruel painful, vindictive, tragic. This week, we're nearly bound to sing, were you there when they crucified my Lord? But we will be foolish, immature, unrealistic to imagine that we would not have been crying Hosanna today and perhaps crucify on Friday. For faced with such self-offering love, the world struggles to provide an adequate and a deep and a clear response. We know that to be true. We see it in the images from Ukraine, Yemen, all those other places in the world where peace and justice and love and passion are blocked out with pain 
and suffering and those terrible things that we humans do to one another, sometimes even saying we're doing it in the name of God. What we can do, what we will do now, is pray for a world that cannot and will not pray for itself. And Bob's going to lead us in that. So let's bring our prayers and our requests before God now. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that on this Palm Sunday, we remember that Jesus came humbly, riding on a donkey, proclaiming peace. And we pray today for the peace of Jerusalem and for peace in our times. We lift before you all the areas of conflict in the world. We're thinking so much about Ukraine because it's on our TV screens such a lot at the moment. But we remember that there are so many other areas of our world experiencing conflict. We pray for those in positions of responsibility in these places, that they would govern with wisdom, understanding and compassion. We pray for all those caught up in conflicts, the injured, the bereaved, the refugees. We pray that they will receive the support and care that they will need. And we pray that those families who will come to the UK will be able to get through the red tape and find a warm welcome here. Make us instruments of your peace, Lord and guide us in the Ministry of Reconciliation. We pray too for our own part of the world, for our nation and for our neighbourhood. We pray for those who serve in our government and our local councils, those who have the power to make decisions that affect us all. Lord, help them to be wise and caring not self-serving, but always to consider those who don't have a fair share of the wealth of the country. We lift before you this morning the, the local projects that we support that make connections with our community and our neighbours. The food bank, the market Bible stall, the CAP debt centre, Cup of Care, the Ukrainian Project, the Holiday Food Project. We pray that all of these projects will be used to spread love into our community and bless those that they serve. On that first Palm Sunday, the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, save us. Father God, you sent Jesus, our saviour, to become truly human and suffer death on the cross to be our saviour. We are so thankful for the assurance of being your children, being forgiven and having the fellowship of his resurrection. And in the quiet of our hearts, we name before you loved ones, those who have yet to acknowledge Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for their own sins May they find peace in you as we have. Our God, we stand here at the beginning of this holy week, this week in which your church remembers Jesus' passion and death. We're so easily distracted by many things. But we pray, turn our hearts now to the one who comes in your name, the one who answers when we call. Help us to follow the events through this week, to relive the drama. We thank you, Lord, for sending your son to us in human frailty to walk the road that we walk. Open our eyes that we may see him coming 
and praise him with pure hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Last song time, there is only blessing on the order after this, because it doesn't say coffee, but yes, Katie, it's already been called, love, you were, you haven't arrived <laughs> at that point. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have not let you speak, because I knew what you were going to say. <laughs> So, you may wish to stand up, as, as I always say, it's between you, God, and your knees. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. John's indicated the refreshments are being served downstairs at the conclusion of our worship. Uh, if you're planning to be part of the Good Friday events, especially the procession uh, and then the soup lunch afterwards, uh, Edna has got her team together doing the soup and everything else, but might value a little bit of help in you know, handing the soup out and clearing the, the table. So if you're going to be here, then uh, perhaps you have a word with me and we'll see how we can support Edna and the Cup of Care team on Friday. And now may God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you as together we walk through this holy week to Good Friday and then to the day of resurrection itself. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.